Hello everybody, welcome to this part 9 of this tutorial for beginners in Revit. Here I will explain how to draw detail and model lines, how we can edit line styles and line weights, and finally, I will talk about cropping a drawing, that's for a 2D view, and the section box, which is a feature used for 3D views. So, I think that we are ready to start. Detail lines are annotation objects in Revit, and they are used for annotation purposes, in the same way that we use dimension lines or text. Now, suppose I want to draw a line here to indicate this is a different area of that room. I go to the Annotate tab, click on Detail Line, then go to this endpoint and draw it, for example, towards that wall. As you can notice, several line styles are loaded by default into the project, and we can always create new ones if we want. Let's select the line and bring it to wide lines. One main characteristic of the detail lines is that they only show in the view that I create them. This is very important. If I draw, for example, a circle outside and go to a 3D view, you can see that it's not showing there. Now, on the Architecture tab, there is a very similar tool, Model Lines, and you can see that the symbol is also identical. But what is the difference between them? Model Lines are real elements, and that means they will appear in all the views as soon as we draw them. I'm going to activate the Model Line on the Architecture tab, then the Line Style is fine this one, for example, this could be a pavement at the entrance of the house, and when I finish, I can switch again to the 3D view, and this time, look, the lines appear there. Convert detail lines in model lines. Now, let's see this example. We have here a plan view of a kitchen and I will draw two dashed lines to indicate that the area of the right is dedicated for dining. Turn on Detail Line. And then I will use the line style Hidden Lines, which are dashed green lines. So I'm going to draw two here. Now that I have finished, I switch to the 3D view, and as you expect, they are not displayed there. Great, but suppose that later I have changed my mind and I want these lines to appear in all the views. Imagine them as a real separation, for example, a boundary painted on the floor, even if it sounds a bit hypothetical. But that's simple. If I select both, at the Modify tab, there is an option to convert detail lines into model lines. Click there and they will show up in all the views that we have in this file. The opposite is also possible. I can convert model lines in detail lines. But then, have in mind that these lines keep showing only in the current view. The system erases them from all the other perspectives. Now let's see a different example. This time I want to draw model lines on this wall. Here the lines can represent real objects, just as wall joints or a separation between different materials. But how can I do this? Let's see. When you try to draw a line directly in the wall, you can notice it's getting a bit hard to snap points here, and even the vertical direction. It looks like that we can't draw exactly on the place we expect. But if I rotate the view, you can see the lines actually went to the ground floor. And that's because I have the placement plane set as ground floor. So I need to change it. I click on the list, but all the other options are still floor plans. What should I do? I have to pick that wall as my specific drawing plane. 
I select Pick and in this window I choose Pick a Plane. Then we have to select a wall, but be careful. Make sure the correct wall is highlighted the moment just before you click. Ah, and click only once. We may think nothing happened because the wall is not highlighted anymore, but you can always be sure that it was selected if you look at the placement plane. Finally, I can easily draw the lines using the snaps at the windows and to connect to the roof, there are also intersections here. Now let's learn how we can edit these line types as well as line weights. This time I have drawn some detailed lines. Here we have a line in the hidden line style, while the lines that form this rectangle are thin lines. Ah, and in Revit there is no polyline tool. If I want to move the rectangle, I need to select all the lines together first, as each line is independent. Now let's go to the Manage tab, Additional Settings, and I'm going to select Line Styles. These are the ones that come by default with Revit. It's possible to modify the colors and the weights, but I cannot delete them. This is important. For example, I'm going to change the hidden lines to red color and then click on Apply and you can see the changes. Now, look at the line weight projection. This is quite particular. Instead of specifying a length, I need to choose a number from 1 to 16 and the greater the number, the thicker the lines. If I change this to 4, the hidden lines turned a bit wider than they were before. On the tab at the right, we can set a type of line that we want to use. There is an interesting range of patterns here. For example, if I select dot, it has this format. Now, if you look at this list, maybe you remember that some of the lines that are here were not available to choose when we draw model or detail lines. For example, the lines used for sketch mode are magenta. But if I prefer, I can change the color always when I want. To create a new style, I can go to Modify Subcategories, click on New, and then I can add the name that I wish. It goes to the line category, and at the end, click on OK. In conclusion, if you want to use your personal line styles, I recommend to create a bunch of them, just the ones that you need, of course, and keep the default styles unchanged. And remember that this only applies to the file that you are currently working on. However, a trick to avoid doing this process all the time is creating a template file with all those styles there. Now, let's look how Revit manages line weights. For that, we will go to the settings, which are located just below the line styles. Here, we have a very complete table with lots of values, so let's have a look at what they mean. It's easy. The size of line weights change according to our scale, and as I told you before, we set 16 sizes. The values here are annotative. In other words, they are the widths of the lines on the paper when you print a project. I'm going to show you an example so it's easier to understand. The dashed line here is a hidden line. When I access the line styles, I can see it's in the projection 1, the thinnest width. And for the current scale of 1 per 50, it measures 0.18 mm. If I set 3, it measures 0.35. And for 5, it's 0.7. So, this is not hard. But now I want to show you a bug 
that is appearing on my version. If I cancel the changes, it returns to the settings I had before. However, you notice the line still continues with the line weight number 5. This should update automatically, but it didn't. Although, you don't need to worry, because it will happen once you make a change in the project. For example, change the scale and then return it back to 1 per 50. And now you can see the line how it was in the beginning. Now, pay attention at this detail, it's just curious. Considering the values by default, the smaller scale 1 per 10 has only 14 different projections because the sizes 14, 15 and 16 are all 9mm. And the same happens on the other extremity. The scale 1 per 500 has the three smaller projections, 1 to 1, 3 and 0.1. And I think less than that value, it will get too hard to visualize, so it's not good. Actually, just the scale 1 per 100 is the only one that has a unique value for all the 16 projections. So, if we want, it's possible to change the line weight values. But I usually don't do it, as we have a considerable big range. Probably, it will not be necessary to use all the projections. Anyway, to edit a value, it's simple. We only need to click on a cell and type the new number. Ok, I leave it 0.5 as I really didn't want to change it. Then, another thing we can do is adding a column of sizes for a new scale. I click on that and here I can add a new scale by selecting from the scales that are loaded in this project. For example, 1 per 1000. And it will copy the values from the closest scale. If instead I add a scale 1 per 25, it copies the values of the scale 1 per 20 and 1 per 50, because they are the same. Then if I think it's relevant, I can change the sizes. So, to delete the scale, you just select the one that you want and press delete. So, these were the basics about line styles and line weights. You can always play around here, it's kind of fun and it's good for practicing. Crop region and crop views. With these tools at the properties window, we can decide which part of the drawing we want to view. Let's have a look at this. In this floor plan view, we decided we want to show just a specific area, for example, the kitchen. Going to the Extend section, the first three options are the ones that help in this matter, you will see. First, I need to activate the crop region and the rectangle appears on the screen. If you can't see anything, zoom out a bit until you see it. Then I can select the region and with the help of the grips, I can modify the rectangle to cover just exactly what I want. You can see, it's easy. Finally, I can leave it around here because what I want to show is the area of the kitchen. Then, the entire floor plan is still visible and that's because I have the option Crop View switched off. I check that box, click on Apply and then you can see that everything out of the area was simply hidden. If I want to hide the border but keep the same area showing up, just uncheck the box Crop Region Visible. Ok, another thing and this is important. As you can see, some annotation elements are still visible, even if they are outside the region. That's the case of these room tags. They appear because they belong to rooms that have a little portion of the area inside the box. But that's fine, due to that, Revit has an extra option called Annotation Crop. Click there and then on Apply. And now, when a crop region is selected, an additional dashed area shows up on the workspace. It's basically the range of the annotation elements. So if I modify the area, I can hide the room tags. And look, 
I make them disappear even if the area does not fully cover the object. A section box is like a crop region but for 3D views. Let's see how this works. I'm going to create a new copy of this 3D view called Ground Floor. Then in the Extends panel there is an option to add a section box. I click there and now I have a box covering the full house. When I select it you can see that I can manipulate its size easily with the grips. Look, this works in a very similar way as the crop region. So I'm going to drag the grip at the top face a bit down because I want to show a 3D perspective of the ground floor. It's easy as you can see. So this tool, I find it quite fun. We can also make section of views or I can also focus in only one story, like what I'm doing now. So just play around with this. To hide the section box, I select it, click with the right button and hide that element. It's simple. And remember, if we want to bring it back later, turn on the button Reveal Elements at the view control bar and as you can see, there is the section box and there are also levels hidden here. This time I just want to select a box, then I go to Unhiding View, and now it's again on this 3D view. Later, if I don't want the section box anymore, I remove the tick and it shows again the full project. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black to watch the full list of tutorials for beginners in Revit. There are also AutoCAD tutorials if you are interested. So see you next time!